We are back with Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy. And I have Doug Baker with me today. Hi, Doug. How are you today? I'm wonderful. Thank yeah. you. And Doug, you've been on the show before. Yes, I have. But we just tapped the surface, I feel, the last time you were here because we spoke a lot about how you came to work with supporting families uh, by doing what you call, you are a lifespan special needs financial advisor. Yes. Okay. And we're going to get into what that means. Um, but when you were here last, we spoke a lot about you being a dad of a son with autism. Mm -hmm. And your son is older now. 20, almost 23. Almost 23. It's my six foot four, 11 year old. Okay. <laughs> and we talked a lot about how your life really changed after that. You found a new purpose in working with families with children on the spectrum yes. to help them get financial peace of mind, essentially, mm -hmm. and to help navigate the process of what they need to do to plan ahead. Mm -hmm. So, um, Tell us, tell us how you do that. Well, I, when I did my own planning, I found that there was really nobody out there helping us, helping look at our life and taking us down that path and putting their arm around us and saying, this is where you need to go and this is who you need to see and this is how you need to do this and how to do that and what works best for you. So that's where I kind of came up and said, hey, you know what, from you know, birth through survivorship, there are so many changes that we need a lot of assistance. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of really looked at the three fundamental foundations everything kind of boils down to mm -hmm. in our lives we look for. We look for the financial well-being, our quality of life, and mm -hmm. last but not least, our pursuit of health and happiness. And I've kind of modeled my program after the financial well-being and the quality of life. That, you know, that health and happiness is an inner spiritual, whatever it is that you use uh, or outside influence that you use. I'm not a PhD psychologist or a psychiatrist or anything of that nature, so I'll leave that to those experts. Okay. But if I can help the family with two out of three, that gives them that chance to better focus on that, that health and happiness. Well, yeah, without those first two components. Correct. How and they're you, all interrelated. They're obviously. all interrelated. I mm -hmm. mean, as a family, if we're in stress over providing our child the services they need and uh, the ability to thrive and survive, yes. our health and happiness suffers. As we all know, that's mm -hmm. where the stress comes in and then we start to take on illnesses and sure. various things. So um, tell me, um, let's talk about how families can, can thrive in the special needs system because I think what happens, speaking from the perspective of a mom with a child with autism, is uh, once you get past the uh, shock, the denial, the anger, then you're into acceptance, and then you start moving, uh, you're so focused on getting services and getting your child better, uh, what we call recovery, if we get, you know, if, if we get our child diagnosed young enough, we start all the things, the, the ABA therapy, possibly biomedical treatments, whatever paths we pursue. The recovery machine, the, yes. The recovery machine. Yes. And um, while we're doing the recovery machine, it's difficult, if not impossible, to focus on the future. Plus, you're kind of afraid to say... You're exhausted. You're exhausted. We're exhausted as families. We, we, it's, I see so many families that are at this point where they have so many things coming at them, they're overwhelmed. And I guess if I go back to those first two components of those, you know, the, that triangle foundation, I make those components easier for the families okay. so they can focus on that health mm -hmm. and happiness. Um, First of all, we're all tired, so we have to kind of figure in our, our mind, we have to get over being tired uh, okay. because for most of us, 95% of us, we're going to have a special needs child for the rest of our life. And the recovery, recovery machine can take a lot of time mm -hmm. and obviously it takes a lot of money. And yes. It's money typically out of our pockets instead of being provided for us. So it's helping families understand information. I, I kind of tell families, one of the things that help you is cluster yourself in groups, support mm -hmm. groups. Mm -hmm. um, you do better in numbers in education and sharing information. And that's how most of our 
organizations actually started. Foothill Autism Alliance talks about meeting in the front of a room at one of the therapy clinics and the parents started talking and that's how they started. Okay. And that's where Philip Hain and, and all them uh, got together uh, uh, and started you know, doing the uh, UD Bennett, uh, moving that group. I mean, that's really common. Mm -hmm. um, there's a new uh, a group in the South Bay mm -hmm. where I live that it happens to be an autism society group, but it could have just been talk, it could have been Generation Rescue, it could have been Autism Speaks, except they don't really have groups. Um, and they're all 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 year old parents mm -hmm. of kids that they're scared mm -hmm. because this services cliff, and you know, everyone's used to the fiscal cliff, we have a a services cliff yes, we at do. 22 yeah. in the state of California. It's 21 in other states, but they aren't, there's, you know, and the, the focus hasn't been on the adult stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that's the new battlefront for us. Um, you know, when we fought, when my son was young, by the time we got ABA and early intervention part of the program, he was nine. It yeah. kind of really passed him by. Right. Now we're at a point where we're fighting this adult side, and right. it'll be, it might be five or ten years before we start seeing benefits from it, but right. it's families like yours and so forth that are coming through that will have benefits. And, and it's with service, it, the numbers don't work. With the service cuts that are happening legislatively, we're having probably 40% increase over the next five to eight years, and funding's being cut about that much. So right. how do you handle that many more people in the system with a lot less money? So there's definitely some things that we have to do, and we can talk about circling our community and circling our money okay. as we get further on in, in, in this talk. Okay, so um, you're saying, get, let's review, <clears throat> get over being tired, cluster and support groups, and ask the hard questions to demand answers from the agencies, meaning regional center, Department of Mental Health, Health Services, Social Security, and more. Make sure you're getting the maximum out of those. Whatever your diagnosis and, and the benefit of the autism and the Down syndrome and, and, and the intellectual disabilities, these families, they have the regional center. Right. But the Asperger's don't. The mental health, which is our taboo world, doesn't, and that's really our biggest community. I mean, uh, there's so many families out there. Uh, this whole thing that happened in, in Connecticut in Newtown. has brought this to a head in regard to the lacking of services. Right. And, you know, there's, uh, you, you know, I'm, I'm really big on LinkedIn, and boy, I'll tell you the arguments and the discussions going on about guns, you know, should the gun control more mental, you know, it's, 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 it's guns don't kill, kill people, people kill people. Yes. Um, we, our lack of mental health services mm -hmm. has, has been atrocious. I spoke a lot about, I was on a lot of newscasts and in a lot of um, newspapers giving my take on the fact that, you know, obviously we couldn't just say Asperger's was Correct. the cause because Correct. generally Asperger's young people are not violent. I said they're more likely to discover the cure for cancer than Correct. do a mass shooting. So I wanted to dispel a lot of myths, but clearly there is a cliff where our kids Kids, when they get older, I mean, this young man was just sitting at his parents' home getting nothing at the age of 22. You know, the interesting thing was his family was a pretty well-to-do family. I know. His mother, you know, she, I mean, she earned quite a bit of money through mm -hmm. her, her, through her alimony, alimony, and they had ac access to I know, the services. but he wasn't so, getting them. And, you know, Tragic. it's, it, but sometimes these higher functioning people, you, unless you can figure out a way to get a conserved, because they may not be taking their medication, they get right. off. I mean, this, there, oh, there's a whole conservatorship process that happens in, okay. in that world as well. Mm -hmm. um, it can be difficult for them. Right. And they can be very bright. They can, you know, they can argue a good argument, mm -hmm. and the courts can sit down and say, this person is very competent, they can right. take care of themselves. Intellectually so, very uh, competent. He needed help, and now we've got to kind of reevaluate the system and see what we have to come up with. Exactly. Okay. Um, should, let's take a break, and we're going to come back with talking about the education years. Sure. Okay? Sure. And then we're going to talk about the adult years in terms of what you feel uh, we're going to need to be aware of. And then... Um, trying to really help solve this problem and what individuals can do, okay? All right, sure. we'll be right back then.
We are back with Doug Baker, who is here to talk with us about how he works with families, uh, not only in the financial area, but advising them on how to utilize all of the various services that are out there to help your child and how to build really a life program for your child. Would that be correct? Correct. I've, you know, your, your finances and your children aren't separate. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I took my role as a special needs advisor helping advise families navigating the mm -hmm. system and merged it with financial advisor wealth management. Um, and that's what I wanted when I was looking for services. So now it's allows these people to kind of focus on where they're going to go in their life mm -hmm. and how they're going to be able to afford it and how they're going to really live the life. You know, the, the special needs trust and the, the, the life insurance policy, that's a great death plan, but we're talking a living plan. What is going to happen between here and there? And you and I have a good 30, 40, maybe 50 years ah, uh, yeah. going in, in, into that. Um, but it's how is our quality of life because if we're not taking care of ourselves first, we're no good to our Family or our special needs child. Okay. So, uh, um, so yeah, let's let's you know uh, education. What do we want? Education. Wanna, um, understand for these families when they start out, and you know when we start on the early edges, understand what an assessment is. Mm -hmm. Understand how the assessment affects is going to affect your services in school. Um, get the independent evaluations and, and find out what the policies are. Uh, you want to get independent evaluations. How's the school going to pay for it? What is there, what are they willing to do with it? And um, how's it going to be used in regard to you, for your specific family's plan? Mm -hmm. Not only the education side, but how you as a parent are going to be able to help manage your child okay. as you're going so forward. You're saying an independent assessment or evaluation is well, crucial? Well, independent evaluation is the right of uh, every family. I think um, usually it's done every three years, but mm -hmm. it might be done two years. That depends on the policy mm -hmm. and the procedures of the, the different school districts. Okay. Um, demand accountability. Mm -hmm. Demand accountability out of your, your IEP team. Mm -hmm. uh, IEP is not restricted to once a year. Some families get in that you know that that mode like it's once a year. Right. They have to set it up according to your your plans. Mm -hmm. You know when we started back in the '90s, in the early '90s, we didn't know our rights. Right. We didn't have the advocates. Right. And so today, there's so much information out there, and there's so much stuff you can find on the internet, which we didn't have back in the early '90s either. Mm -hmm. um, it can almost be overwhelming. Uh, so tell me about it. the concept is is you have to take a focus. You have to keep your head about you, but ideally, you want to cooperate with the school system because they're the ones that are, you know, taking the trying to take the best care of your child. Some are better than others, mm -hmm. and that's where you got to go back, go back in and demand the accountability. Okay. Um, stay on the regional center or Department of Mental Health on a regular basis mm -hmm. while they're in school. There's still a behavior modification program that can take place, mm -hmm. and I've got many program many families that. They come home from school and their kids may have a couple of hours of ABA, you know, two or three or four yes. or five days a week. Provided by on, regional yeah, center. Provided by regional center. A lot of people kind of forget that right. process. They say, well, after three, it's the school's problem. Yeah. No, not the behavior no. side. And so, so, so stay on your regional center. Or your department of mental health in regard to what services they're going to be able okay. to provide for your, your child. And then you're going to get, you know, <laughs> why it's 11. Right. And it just seemed like he was six. Right, it sure did. My son's 23. He's been out of the school system for a year now. And I can, it just seems like he was six to me. Okay. At 14, start your transition plan. Now, okay, tell me the definition. Law, definition well, well, of a the transition. Well, the transition plan is starting to build skills for, for independent living. Uh, mm -hmm. It's actually called an independent transition plan, or, or I'm sorry, individual transition plan that goes inside the IEP. Uh, by law, it's supposed to be in place at 16 years old. Okay. But you can start incorporating the transition plan at 14. There's some great online tools. I mean, on my on my Facebook resource resource page, I've got two or three people that have phenomenal pages providing information on the resource planning process. Okay. Uh, having to do with transitions. So that's a great area to kind of get started. Okay. Because once you start hitting 14, a lot of things start the dominoes start falling. 16, get them evaluated by the Department of Rehab for driver's ed training. Okay. It doesn't matter if your child will never drive a car in their life. That's a great way to engage in department rehab before they're 18 because okay, everyone great. pushes you off to 18. That's a very good you were You were entitled to, there yeah, early. so you get in the department of rehab early. Okay. Uh, now, the department of rehab is going to come after me and say, hey, you got too many people coming after us. That's their job. They're supposed to be doing this. Yes. Um, okay. So, to, and you say, uh, 
conservatorship, guardianship? Well, like, when they turn 18, you've got all sorts of things to think about. Okay. And before they turn 18, um, you've, got, you've got the idea for uh, Supplemental Security Income, SSI. Mm -hmm. um, you have to think about the legal aspect of your child. Is the power of attorney going to work or conservatorship? That's a very personal decision. I'm not very comfortable having a court system in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, but some kids you don't have a choice mm -hmm. and then you can get to the other side the real high functioning ones that have an independence about them but they don't and they can't really manage themselves but they are smart enough to be able to tell an attorney i know what i want i know where i'm at and it could be a fight in the court okay so uh, um you have to think about you know your 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 benefits protecting benefits that are that that are for these kids um and that goes to the grandparents if the grandparents if there's money i had a family come in after one of my seminars uh six months ago and they had a 20 and a half year old daughter that had graduated from high school, had Asperger's, but autism, um, was at a junior college. And their regional center caseworker said, gee, you know, your grandparents left, or you know, your, your uh, uh, daughter for the grandparents uh, was left $200,000 for an education. And if you put that in a special needs trust, she would be allowed to get benefits, mm -hmm. Medi-Cal and SSI. So I explained to them that they had to do a first party special needs trust. And then there's a whole another discussion with first okay. party, third party. Yeah. But they had to do a first party special needs trust. And then they had to do any money going forward. You wanted to put in a third party trust so that wasn't ever touched by the daughter. And that's exactly what they did. They went and saw the attorney. That's what the attorney did. Okay. Um, so you've got to think about all those, you know, the SSI, the Medi-Cal, um, then SSDI. For when one of the parents retires, SSI turns into SSDI, which okay. is more money. Uh -huh. I think uh, why it you know is, is on SSDI yes. now. Yes. Um, so uh, you know it, there's just a lot of things to think about. And then what is it? It's 22. They end the school system. So what comes next? <sighs> the adult it's years. Housing. It's employment. You know. In, in uh, so so. <laughs> this this is daunting to me because I see <clears throat> what a lot of our organizations, our advocacy groups, mm -hmm. our uh, nonprofits and foundations in this area are doing the work they are doing. And I think we're all sort of going, we're not doing it enough for the adults and what's going to happen. What, what are some of the changes you've seen that look promising in this area? Well, legislation is looking at the California legislation is looking at bringing whatever new type of monies that are going to be available. They're really going after the adult services because there's such a large group of us that fought the early fight. Mm -hmm. Now we got our new fight. Uh, we got our. I think this is our third wind. Okay. Um, and it's you're going to see uh, the demand. The demand and services are there. Um, these kids have the ability to improve and learn more. My son, you know, he I. I I need to get him more education training so he can get his GED, mm -hmm. potentially to go forward. Mm -hmm. uh, he has the ability to learn. He just doesn't learn at the same level that you and I can. Of course. You and I can learn very, I can learn some things very quickly in uh -huh. a very short amount of time. It might take him five times the amount of time. Mm. Um, and, but he has that ability to improve mm -hmm. and he's shown it and I've seen it and, and I've worked with him on it. Of course. So. Uh, um, there's there's got to be services going forward and and you know I was just talking to uh, one of our providers uh, uh, Laura Roberts who runs uh, ABC down in the South Bay and she's uh -huh. got a pretty severe son that uh -huh. doesn't you know read or write very well right uh, Laura's been providing ABA therapy for a lot of years because she wanted some great services and you know she was talking about their concern about what are they going to do with their son um, where he's going to be and he's because he can never really probably work right but. He could be in a, in a care program, mm -hmm. a daycare program, to give him continuing education. Mm -hmm. And maybe some of the people that work in that program could be assistants, could be high-functioning mm -hmm. autism because they work pretty well. Or it could be a Down syndrome person that has pretty good capabilities. Mm -hmm. So there might be ways of employment of that nature. I mean, one of the attorneys at one of my seminars was talking about a bike company that all these high-end bikes were made by all dis disabled people. Yeah. 
And it was a high quality, and the repetitive motion didn't bother them. No, they, they well, did, well, we're finding their, their more and more. Their craft of doing that work yeah. was great. We so, found that there are a lot of entrepreneurs out there with their own children on the spectrum or have other developmental delays that are start, starting companies sure. specifically geared. We talked to a, to a family that owns a bookstore back east that mm -hmm. only hires people on the spectrum. Correct. Uh, there's uh, a Danish entrepreneur who's coming to America. America that's been using uh, kids on the spectrum in computer programming and having enormous success with that. So we do know those entrepreneurs are out there and we obviously support that and urge that. One of the keys um, I think is many of these in this high unemployment environment, yeah. a lot of our families, the parents need employment. I mean, you know, I, I, you were at the, the, uh, the, the conference at uh, Autism Society last January, a right. year ago, where that whole came up and I kind of stood up and said, hey, look, you know, with this unemployment, I think the parents is more important that they can help support their kids. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of the model that I'm building as I go forward, you know, siblings or parents that can become advisors like me, financial advisors and you know, with, with the special needs assistance mm -hmm. and to understand and live this life, I plan, that's my whole growth uh, mechanism is bringing on younger families like that because I, you know, there's no retirement for me. I love this. I, I could win the lottery and $100 million tomorrow. And you'd still do I'd this. still be doing this because it's a passion okay. and it's what I love to do. But I need to bring on some 30 year olds. Yeah. You know, because I'm, I'm, I'm 55 this mm -hmm, year. Mm -hmm. I need to bring on younger people to follow that generation, to follow that survivorship, to mm -hmm. follow those families. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's about supporting our own community because, you know, right now we are, we are invisible. Our legislation, we've got great voices. There's no money. We don't know where it is. And it's sitting in the big Wall Street financial institutions that don't identify us. And that's, you know, that's, there's a whole nother discussion on how we need to kind of start circling our money, mm -hmm. start supporting the organizations that support us and, and not giving our money to these organizations that, that are whining and dining those legislators out there that are voting against our services for mental health or autism and not giving us extra money, but they're forwarding their own banking agenda and kind of getting that whole thing done yeah. uh, at their benefits, nothing for our community. Not benefiting our so. families. Now, you have something here that I thought was very interesting. And I, th I said to my husband this morning, I'm cutting this out and I'm putting it on uh, maybe the refrigerator or I don't know, maybe I should keep it in my wallet. You say, look in the mirror and ask yourself, who will benefit from the money I spend today? Do that every time you pull out your cash, credit card, or checkbook. Checkbook, that's kind of going away too, isn't it? Yeah. So that piece of advice, I mean, that's motivated what by... What that means is every day we spend, we choose where we spend our money. Yes. And every day you walk into to Chase or Bank of America or one of these big organizations that mm -hmm. just don't care. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I was with one of them for a while and did all my training. And, you know, you can see that on my LinkedIn page or whatever. Uh, the fact is they didn't care. They didn't have, there was no conscious of, uh, you know, just bringing money. They bringing you know, money from I'm the sorry, you can't, you can't refer, yeah, you can't refer an attorney. You can't refer a special needs trust attorney. You, you can't do that. They kept telling me what I can't do. And I kept telling them what we need to do for this community. Okay. So I had to take my ball and go elsewhere and build my model. And realistically, it's those that support us are there. Um, we make a choice. I make a choice every day that I'm not going to buy Chinese made products if I can avoid it mm -hmm. because I want to support my, my country. My I want to, you know, or another country besides China because they're kind of trying to take over. So I don't believe in that. So when I can, I will avoid a Chinese product. If there's an alternative plastic laundry basket, I can't find it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, sometimes you can't find shoes that aren't mm -hmm. made in China mm -hmm. or assembled in China. But, but how do we find businesses that support our, our group, well, uh, uh, you know, our community? How we do we could find go to, them? We could go easy to the local community businesses, the banks and, and you know, some of these local and, and regional banks. I mean, they're much more in tune to the community. They've got more of our members working there and they give you better service. Okay. Um, plus, you know, you, you, you start finding people, the, 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 the restaurants that are run by special needs, the car repair shops, the, these, uh, uh, the floral shops, whatever you kind of go down the line, uh, we need to start identifying ourselves more. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get in a room 
And I often, you know, when I do a presentation, I might start the presentation on introduce yourself and what kind of business you're in. Well, do we have any sort of database for these businesses? I mean, I no. know there's an Angie's list that gives yeah. you services. Why don't sure. we do something like we, that? You're the person. You know, <laughs> I'm a catalyst. I, I'm trying okay. to, you know, I'm still trying to make a living out here, too. Well, this is a good idea we came up with today. Somebody's well, got to come up with a list of businesses that support. And it should start inside of our groups. And, you yeah. know, in our, in our associations, we yeah. should start, you know, finding out what people do so mm -hmm. everyone knows what you know, if somebody's a, a restauranteur or a, a wine connoisseur or somebody's a uh, uh, manufactures widgets at a certain local mm -hmm. place or somebody owns a sporting goods store or, you know, so forth, um, you know, we still, I, listen, I, I, I've got a, somebody that's a client that's working for the, one of those big bad behaving banks mm -hmm. and he's got a, you know, uh, pretty severe, you know, uh, 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 person on the spectrum mm -hmm. and, and he's been doing this for a lot of years. He has no idea. Because he's never been involved in his family's special needs side of the life. He's always been involved in his own, the real world business where, right. you know, we come out of our cave and we go to work in the real world and we go back to our cave when mm -hmm. nobody knows what, you know, that we mm -hmm. live this life, you know, mm -hmm. 7 by 24. Right. So. Um, for, for our viewers today um, who probably have, uh, I would say the majority of them have younger kids mm -hmm. and they're just starting this process. They're involved in uh, trying to get obviously the best behavior therapy, the best education for their children. What are the things they can be thinking about now and should be doing uh, for the future? It's funny, I was at UCLA Resnick and I did a presentation and every family was under eight years old. Some of them had two year olds. And I said, you know, I made the comment that one of the best things you can do when your child's first born, obviously before they're diagnosed, Down syndrome, you know you're born with it, mm -hmm. but autism and mental illness are these surprise, they mm -hmm. all of a sudden come on and we pray that they go away all of a sudden. Yes. Um, but somewhere you know, before six months, you could get a very inexpensive growing life insurance policy. Okay. Not that I'm a big life insurance guy, but mm -hmm. for 100 or $110 a month for life, for putting in 80 or $75,000, in 65 years, that policy would be worth almost a million dollars. That's just the way it grows. Astounding. And so people say, well, you know, I've already got my kids. Well, if you're having another one, just, you know, and, and, and put because that could make a great back end for a special needs trust mm -hmm. at some point in time. And it would okay. be a policy on the child. Mm -hmm. But so you, know, you, so as you're looking forward, you, it's, it's helping people no more gotchas. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, what's the next surprise that they're going to throw at me? There's so many isolated uh, uh, therapies and so forth, that, and, and I, I try to work with a lot of these organizations, and everyone's kind of protective of their families, and they think that their process is the end all in life. Mm -hmm. But it's just kind of a, you, you know, I have, a, I have a, uh, a chart I use. If there's one thing I use in my whole presentation, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can put it up on the TV. Uh, but I think Emily I, might be able to get it I up. have this great chart. Let's see, this, Emily, can this, you get that chart up? Yeah, what this does is if I... It spent my presentation there it talking. Is. I okay. could talk a two hour presentation on this one page. Okay. And basically, I've simplified it, and this is based on the California system because of the regional center, but mm -hmm. I think chart could go across the country. Mm -hmm. When you start, you're born, you've got early diagnosis, you get early intervention, you got your first IEP, you just kind of go all the way through. You got There's so, so many commonalities, but there's so many things that are different. All of our kids are go to kindergarten, right? It doesn't matter if you're special needs or not. All of our kids go through puberty. It doesn't uh -huh. matter if you're special needs or not. Right. All of our kids turn 18. Right. But we've got, you know, and those are just, that's just showing a couple of the the minor points. There's so many other things that the therapies, the OP, the OT, the speech therapy, the, uh, you know, your ABA or RDI or PRT or, or floor time or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what it does is it, it, it's, I, as part of my presentation on the key ages and stages for these families, the strategic lifespan is showing these families what are these different, different stages and what are the different modules that are moving in each one. Because we change. I mean, our kids go to, grade school for six grades and then yeah. they go to middle school maybe yeah. for two or three grades and mm -hmm. then they go to high, high school. school and then after high school it might be junior college mm -hmm. and then you know I mean my goal would be in a couple of years and it's just still my goal and I think I said this is get my son over to Marshall University in West Virginia because mm -hmm. they've got this great two year program. Great program and so then you know then after that where do we go and, and right. it's just helping them along and providing yeah. the services so okay now you're giving you've got some conferences coming up don't you um I well I I 
I do stuff for Friendship Circle in the South Bay. Okay. We've got a really large group that ends up showing up there, usually 40 or 50 people okay. at a time. I have a presentation on, on this, these strategies for uh -huh. surviving and, and thriving in the special needs system on services and agencies and how the funding and insurances will work. That's coming up on the 16th. Where uh, is that now? In that's the in the Friendship Circle uh, okay. in the South Bay. It's, uh, um, I think, uh, gotfriends.com is okay. the website and so forth. Uh -huh. Uh, I'm doing, I think, Autism Conferences of America. They just kind of gave me a small slot here. I don't you know. They haven't confirmed it, but it looks like I'm going to be speaking okay. there in March. But how do people, can they go to your website? Your, yes. Is I, that the best? Uh, well, I, my Facebook page is, a, is the best page. Best page. Uh, okay. And, and that, that is? It's, uh, it's facebook.com forward slash special needs advisor. Special needs advisor. Yeah. Forward and slash uh, special I think, needs in advisor. fact, she's got it there on okay, the bottom great. of the screen for us. So uh, if, if there are organizations out there that wish to have you present, if there families that wish to talk to you individually about sure. devising a plan for their families and come to you for advice, you're available. Yeah, I, you know, I'm starting to get, now I'm, people are starting to email me off Facebook or, you know, my, my direct email and they're starting to say, okay, I, I like your ideas on what you're planning. What do we need to do next? Well, Great. let's sit down and talk about your personal situation. There's no fee to sit down and meet with me. Okay, but you I do I a help, consultation. Yeah, I help families kind of plan their stuff out and, okay. and, and focus where we can get for their whatever legal or whatever things going to state planning and special needs trust, whatever makes sense. Right. Well, thank you for doing you're the work you welcome. do. And, uh, you know, you're, th this is a service that is so badly needed right now. And we don't want to put our heads in the sand about these issues. You got to face the music at some point in time. You do. We're, so. we're all in this together and uh, we have to face it, not be in denial.